Hello and welcome to the final episode of this Jurassic Park 3 um, Jurassic World Evolution 2 sandbox build. Um, so we're going to get some names out of the way that um, you guys have suggested. So we had Frank the Stratosaurus here and we're going to have Frank with an E. So I thought that was quite funny. Um, somebody named him Frank with an E. Um, Noah VT Young, thank you for that suggestion. So we have Frank and Frank and then somebody wanted to name the other one. We'll get to that in a minute. So here we have the Alpha Stratosaurus and somebody named him Fresher. Um, the Dark Spino, thank you for that. Thanks for suggestions. Um, also, by the way, suggestions for this series are over as this is the final episode, um, but suggestions for the next series are open. So what biome I should use, what dinosaurs I should add, uh, enclosure ideas and stuff let me know in the comments and I'll get to that and um, get to work on my next series um, which will probably be in the new year um, or maybe before depending on how I'm feeling um, anyway in this final of episodes we are building a Tyrannosaurus enclosure so we have to end with a bang using the most iconic dinosaur there is in the Jurassic Park franchise so just getting the path all sorted out We've got that rid of that horrible ugly path from the first episode it's quite sad actually, <laughs> but um, anyway, just making this long exhibit here, another quite big one for one of the star attractions. Yeah, placing all the trees in, making it, giving it lots of cover. Yes, yeah, placing all like, the trees along here and stuff, adding a big water source, then I place like, a rock texture there, and then I put it on a bit of a hill actually, yeah, placing dirt texture around as well. And then fang texture there. Then adding all the ground fibre and stuff. <laughs> I just realised there were some people trapped in the um, uh, enclosure. So I opened the gate. Well, I put a gate in and then opened it. Yeah, putting in a goat feeder there. Then some um, viewing galleries. I only put one in to begin with, but then I thought I might as well add two because it'll bulk it up a bit, make it look a lot nicer. Yeah, go deleting that and then placing two. You can see all the people walking up. There we go, opening the gate so they can all get out. We wouldn't want them being eaten by a Rex. <laughs> yeah, I decided to lower this bit because it looked a bit too um, flat. Yeah, there we go, heightening that bit there, adding some hills and stuff to make it more 3D. And of course, carry on tradition by placing a feeder in front of the gallery so then people can see the dancers are eating. Yeah, and of course adding the rocks, the all important rocks that we had. We're placing some big ones here, just to give the uh, guests like, a bit more to look at. And there we go, that pretty much finishes the exhibit off I think. And then we got to work on making the T-Rex. Um, I used the uh, original Jurassic Park 3 skin, which is like a sort of yellowy green. I'm really fond of that skin, really like it. I like all the legacy skins. Then putting some um, T Rex markers in. And of course, putting the plants in as well. Then I place some of these uh, planters just to fence off some uh, rocks that I put here. Yeah, take the blank space away. Then I put some food in. No, this was a shop actually, I changed it to a shop. Which would be like the T-Rex gift shop, so you could buy T-Rex related merchandise. Similar to the Spinosaurus one we made in the last episode. Then I added, um, I think, yeah, fast food restaurant opposite because there hadn't been any um, like food amenities. I um, added for a while. And uh, now we get the live footage of the T-Rex coming out of its hatchery. There we go, the ultimate predator. There isn't a more iconic dinosaur than the T-Rex. Even people who don't know the difference between herbivore and carnivore know all about the Tyrannosaurus Rex. 
And when you see her up close, feel her gaze, you understand why the T-Rex was the ruler of the Cretaceous period. There we go. Claire summarizing it, summarizing it up perfectly. <laughs> yeah, just decorating that shop there. Um, I think it's a fast food one, yeah. A little fast food restaurant. Then of course adding signs there saying that this was like the staff facility and that um, guests shouldn't go there. Um, in theory there'd be a gate that um, guests couldn't get through but uh, you can't do that in this game. Uh, then I started work on this hotel complex. Uh, yeah that was ugly as hell. Um, where um, I placed it on a hill but then I managed to find a flat area and uh, placed a couple of hotels in. Then I made this little plaza area, like a seating area for the hotels. Waiting for the buildings to finish. Uh, constructing. There we go. Then just placing all the tables and chairs in, making it more decorated. So then guests can come here and eat. Um, well, hotel guests. Then of course placing planters to separate it from uh, like the rest of the paths. Then I placed a little light there just to get rid of that ugly gap. Then placed some signs signifying that that's the hotel. And um, yeah, pretty much end the area off. Then adding this little um, lake thing, like a pond next to the hotel just for a bit of scenery. And adding rocks in the middle just to make it look less bland. Right, now we can get some footage of our Tyrannosaurus. Oh, I love the T-Rex. How can you not like the T-Rex? They look so much better in this game. In the old game, they used to be like upright, and now they've made them more like horizontal, and they just look so much better. I think they've changed like the face model as well. It used to like look really like like the nasal passage area used to like be really big, and now they've like made it a bit smaller, and it looks like um, more akin to the classic T-Rex, which I'm a much bigger fan of. And it just yeah, it looks so much more fearsome and cool. And there we have that iconic roar. Yeah, such a great dinosaur. I love that the striping down the nose as well. I think that's the skin from Operation Genesis, but it looks a bit more um like light. It's not as um dark. The only thing it's missing is sand, but it doesn't matter because it's a sandbox park anyway, so it's forced to be comfortable. They yeah, decided to have a little lay down there. And now we can start with the park tour. So if you don't want to see any more building, uh, you can click away now. But um, if you want to see a tour of this park, if you've watched the whole series through, uh, you can join me in that and reminisce about the good times we had building this park. So in the first enclosure we have these Ankylosauruses. Christ, it seems so long ago now. Yeah, uh, we put these Ankylosaurus in and uh, also some Cryptonosaurus. And they were um, supposed to be like the baby Ankylosauruses. But it can be a Cryptonosaurus or an Ankylosaurus baby, yeah. Depending on however you want to see it. Yeah, it's quite a good little enclosure to start the park off. Then we can get a little view from the gallery now. Yep. You can see the Crichtonosaurus drink in there. And then you can see the Ankylosaurus in a minute. Yep, there we go. Having a little drink. Quite a good view, actually. Yes, yeah, so that was the first exhibit. And then we built the shops and stuff. That would be like the gift shop that people go to at the end of their trip. And then we have this big main pathway walking through to this control centre here. <laughs> feed and needing some resupplying. I thought it was built close enough to the post but clearly not so I just uh, added a ranger onto that. But, um, yeah then we had the second enclosure which was our uh, Corythosaurus and Dryosaurus enclosure. Do you have all our Corythosaurus herding around here? I think that one just having a little graze. One in the trees there.
And there's that one preening itself. I like that animation. Never realised they had one like that. But I think the Parasaurus has one that's similar to that. So that's quite cool. The Archerosaurus there grazing next to the Dryosaurus. And that one having a little lie down. Yeah, and then we can get to our little Dryosauruses. And then we had the um, Dryosauruses named Gary. Barry. Harry. <laughs> now I'm running to get a, a drink, I think. And then we had Sally, which was the Alpha. The Queen of the Dryosaurus. And then Larry. Having a little munch on some leaves there. They're about to run over the dry sauce and then it goes flying backwards. <laughs> that happened in the, um, I think it's the second episode of this series, you know, which was um, quite coincidental. Yeah, we have the two galleries here for this exhibit. Getting a view of the lake there. You can see all the dry sauce in the background and the Chrysaurus. Um, view a bit blocked by some of the foliage, but it uh, doesn't really matter. And of course, we have this other gallery here, which uh, offers a much better view. Then we had the little seating area that we added there. I've done that quite a lot in this park. So yeah, after you um, visit those exhibits, you can come up here, uh, visit the lab tour, which like shows you how the dinosaurs are made and stuff. We had the two um, emergency shelters there. We had the control center. Then we had another seating area here next to the Ankylosaurus enclosure. Then the pathway there that um, wasn't for guests to the aviary hatchery. And you'd come around here, turn left, and you'd get to the aviary for the guests. So yeah, we have the view from the gallery here. And then this other gallery here. Uh, you get two different viewpoints, which I quite like. I like that pterosaur. Um, no, pteranodon on top of that rock there. I really like that. That's what I was hoping uh, it would look like. Um, when it's finished. But yeah, we had our Pteranodons, the Jurassic Park free skin Pteranodons. This one having a little snack. Oh, I love that skin. It's so much better than the Jurassic World one. Can't preach it enough. <laughs> Doing the hummingbird manoeuvre there. It's like flying, like hovering. I don't think they'd be able to do that in real life, but you know, if one or two have limits to like the flying engine or whatever. Then there's this really sad looking Tranodon. <laughs> it looks really depressed just sitting there with its head buried in between its like, wings. Don't know if that was a um, glitched one that um, kept getting ill but uh, yeah just skip over him. So there's the Tranodons. Then we have the Sungariptorus. Say that three times fast. <laughs> yeah one of the new DLC dinosaurs. Well, it's not really new anymore, but that's that skin. Oh, I love that one. Like the brown, orange, and blue one. So cool. It's one of my favourite colour combinations, like orange and blue. But yeah, one of my new favourite pterosaurs, I think. The Sungariptorus. Perching on the rock there. I like the way they like bury their heads. And it starts taking off. Another one on the rock there. I should have placed another feeder in this exhibit actually. <laughs> because they'll just start crowding around. It's like they'll wait their turn to try and get some food. Yeah, that was all of the uh, species we had in the uh, aviary. Then we had an ice cream shop there and a key ring shop. Then we had this long path up here which led to our Ceratosaurus exhibit. And as you can see to the left there we have our main Ceratosaurus, the official JP3 skin one. Classic. 
that was Fresher. And then we had Frank, that's Frank with an E, right there. So that's quite a good view of this exhibit. Wanted it to be quite large because there's three Stratosaurus and you know they want to roam about and stuff. And you had the viewing gallery there which showed you the feeder so you could watch the dinosaurs eat. Yeah, there we had Frank with an E, Fresher. And just plain old Frank. Good old Frank. <laughs> Frank, Frank and Fresher. I like that trio of names, the three Fs. So yeah, that's that enclosure. Then we had this, oh no, we've already gone over those shops. <laughs> yeah, then we had this little area here with the restrooms and the um, uh, shelters with this uh, rock formation in the middle. It's quite a nice little area just to separate the main pathway. And then you go down here and you get to this viewing tower which goes into our herbivore, like our Brachiosaurus, Parasaurolophus and Struthiomimus exhibit. You can see a Parasaurolophus laying down there, Brachiosaurus laying down there. But yeah, one of the largest exhibits in this park. I think the largest exhibit in this park. Yeah, we had the... Um, seating area here where people could sit and eat another one <laughs> then we had the uh, steak house and the uh, milkshake shop then we had this Jurassic tour which um, I'll give you a little ride on now I mean I don't do a full ride because that would take ages I realised they were Jurassic world workers and not Jurassic Park so I might have accidentally messed up there but um, yeah, good view of a Brachiosaurus there, really close. You can see the security guard riding on board. Unlike a number of other sauropods, the forelimbs of the Brachiosaurus are notably longer than its hind legs. This causes its back to incline and give... Right, so here we have our Parasaurolophus. So they're all herding around this side of the exhibit now. Oh, there's one lonesome one there. And there. And yeah, they're all just herding around. That one having a little itch in front of the Jeep. <laughs> no, um, truck. Getting right in the way. And the fossilised remains of Parasaurolophus discovered it was the <laughs> that one in the background just completely flipping it. <laughs> uh, I'm sure there'd be a few casualties if that actually happened. And then we had our Struthiomimus, and they're all just herding around the <laughs> entrance of the Jeep. Uh, no, the truck tour. That one there has turned, been turned backwards. <laughs> They're all just running around, getting in the way. They're actually really big. And when you look at them, you think they're small. But when you compare it to that um, truck there, they're massive. Then we have our Brachiosaurus. That one there running. Well, it's not. It's not running. It's like race walking. It looks like it could trip up walking down there. Then there's some sleeping Parasaurolophus here, getting away from the rest of them. Right, so that's that exhibit. Then you carry on walking up here until you get to the raptor exhibit, which has the double viewing galleries either side. So you can see they're in the distance over there. And 
and then we have this gallery where you can see them eating but um, they're not around there yeah, let's get a closer look so we have the male ones There's loads of dead goats all around this exhibit. I mean, that's not really a surprise, though, is it? <laughs> and then we have the female one, which is supposed to be the alpha. Right, so then from that exhibit you carry on walking, there's a viewing tower there to the left that goes into the um, other sauropod exhibit, well the Brachiosaurus exhibit, it can't really be called a sauropod exhibit because there's only Brachiosaurus in it. But um, yeah, you carry on walking down here from there and um, we have the cinema, which as I said will probably be like documentaries on a Triceratops or other dinosaurs. And then we have our Triceratops in and Minmi enclosure. So all Triceratops were herding really close together. And you can just see the Minmi there in the distance. So let's get closer to our Triceratops. And then we have our Minmi, which are all uh, hiding in the grass as they always are. Oh, you can actually see this one. Oh, that one's in the trees. Then we have this one here. I like this one, the green patterned one. <laughs> that one running after the jeep. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna hide in the trees there. And then we have another this one, the one that took ages to come out of the foliage. I was waiting here, like, when's it gonna come out? Then you finally see it at the end. There we go. I like that pattern, it's like the white striped one here. Yeah. Quite a cool one actually. Didn't realise I had this one, but uh, all the skins were random and I just put them all in the exhibit so I didn't really get a good look at them. And you see that triceratops in the background? And you compare that to a Minmi there, look at it, it's massive. <laughs> Minmi's like the size of its leg, it's tiny. grazing on the same plant there. But um, yeah, that's pretty much that exhibit all cleared. And then we had the uh, coffee shop there. We have the hotel complex there. And then you can carry on down this path to see the T-Rex, or you can go down the other path and then you can go see the Carcharodontosaurus, which is just here. Carcharodontosaurus named Phoenix, which is a really good name considering the skin.
Let's get a closer look at him or her. <laughs> Phoenix is more of a girl's name, I think. Plus, all the dinosaurs in Jurassic Park are girls anyway, aren't they? Yeah, I really, really, really like that skin. Yeah, it's gonna have a little lie down now. I stayed here a while just to see if it had a unique animation, but not really. Nothing too exciting. I like all the low growls it has. And then you carry on from there and we get to the Spinosaurus enclosure. And as you can see, it's just there having a drink. Then we had the Spinosaurus shop there, which like sells Spinosaurus related gifts and stuff. Then we have the feeder uh, viewing gallery there, so you can see it eating. And we'll get a closer view of him here. I think that's a unique animation for the Spinosaurus. Sort of like sniffs the ground. So he's just going to go wander off into the woods there. And uh, that's pretty much that exhibit. One of the largest in this park. But it deserves it for being one of the most iconic dinosaurs in uh, Jurassic Park. Right, so off from there you'd carry on going up here. And make your way to the T-Rex exhibit, which is the last exhibit. Yeah, the viewing tower here, which gives you a little bit of a elevated view of the dinosaur. You can just see it in the distance there. Then you go all the way up to the viewing galleries here. And you can't see him at the moment. I think he's behind one of those hills or something. Or no, he's in the woods, wasn't he? Yeah. Just about see him peering out now. So yeah, from there you have the restroom there, the uh, is that yeah the shop there, and the fast food restaurant. Then we had this little path that went to the paleo medical facility, which is where all the dinosaurs would be looked after. I wanted to keep that near the um, like the main operation centre because like it would be used for like the welfare of the dinosaurs near the hatchery and stuff. Then with all our staff centres and all the seating areas that we added for them. Like all the staff, the main control centre or science centre. Uh, the expedition centre because the whales would you find the fossils and then we have the ranger uh, facility. Then we had our hatchery enclosure which is where the dinosaurs would like live before they're moved into their real enclosures.
So, thank you for watching this series. Uh, suggestions for the next series are open, so uh, whatever biomes or dinosaurs or enclosures you have planned, um, just let me know in the comments. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching this series, and especially thank you to those who kept with it. So, thanks and bye.